Hello, and welcome back to the Loco Files. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the LMS Coronation Class. The London, Midland and Scottish Railway Coronation Class is a class of express passenger locomotive designed by William Stanier. They were an enlarged and improved version of his previous design, the LMS Princess Royal Class and on test were the most powerful steam locomotives ever used in Britain at 2,511 drawbar horsepower. The locomotives were specifically designed for power, and it was intended to use them on express services between London Euston and Glasgow Central. Their duties were to include the hauling of a proposed non-stop express, subsequently named the Coronation Scott. The first ten locomotives of the Coronation class were built in a streamlined form in 1937, by the addition of a steel streamlined casing. Five of these ten were specifically set aside to pull the Coronation Scott, although a later batch of five unstreamed locomotives was produced in 1938, most of the ensuing Coronation class were outshot as streamliners. From 1944 until production ended in 1948, all new engines were built in unstreamlined form, and all the streamliners had their casings removed. The last of the 38 locomotives was completed in 1948. The increasing use of diesel locomotives made many of the class redundant, and the electrification of the main line between London Euston and Crewe resulted in their banishment from this important section of the main line, as there was insufficient clearance between the locomotives and the live wires. With no useful role to play, the survivors were scrapped from late 1962 until late 1964. Three locomotives were saved for preservation, with one of them ending up in the National Collection. Although the prior introduction of the Princess Royal class had provided the LMS with more powerful locomotives to be used on the main line, between London Euston and Glasgow Central, the Board of Directors were persuaded in 1936 that more such locomotives would be needed particularly as they were being asked to approve the introduction of a new non-stop service between those cities, designated the Coronation Scott. Initially, the chief mechanical engineer, William Stanier, planned to build five more Princess Royals, but the chief technical assistant and chief draftsman at the LMS Derby Works, Tom Coleman, argued that it would be preferable to design a new class of locomotive that was more powerful, more reliable, and easier to maintain. Stania was convinced, and the drawing office commenced designing the new class. When Stania was called on to perform an assignment in India, Coleman became responsible for most of the detailed design in his absence. Compared to the Princess Royal class, there were important differences which would lead to an improved performance. Increased power was obtained by adopting a bigger boiler with greater steam raising capacity. This included a firebox heating surface of 230 square foot versus 217, a flue heating surface of 2,577 square feet versus 2,299, superheater surface area of 830 square foot, although some sources do also say 822, versus 598, and a great area of 50 square feet, versus 45. Also, the steam passages were better streamlined for greater efficiency, and most importantly, the piston valves went up in size from 8 inches to 9.5. In order to allow higher speeds, the diameter of the driving wheels was increased to 6 foot 9 inches from 6 foot 6, 
and the cylinder diameters were increased by a quarter inch. The outside cylinders were moved forward with rocking shafts operating the inside cylinders. Finally, a coal pusher was incorporated into the tender, so the fireman did not have to bring coal forward, significantly cutting his workload which was particularly important on the long runs from Euston to Glasgow. This was problematic in that the new design was so large that it only just conformed to the maximum loading gauge for the main line. Moreover, it was sufficiently heavy that it was close to the civil engineer's maximum weight limit. Nevertheless, Coleman managed to design a streamlined steel casing that hugged the locomotive so tightly that it could still meet the loading gauge. The casing weighed 5.1 tonnes, but Coleman managed to save an equivalent weight in the locomotive itself. The casing was tested in a wind tunnel and retained after it was found to be as good as other forms of streamlining. After introduction, however, it was subsequently found that its aerodynamic form failed to disturb the air sufficiently to lift the exhaust from the chimney, thus obstructing the driver's vision with smoke. The first five locomotives, numbers 6220 to 6224, were built in 1937 at the LMS's crew works at an average cost of £11,641 each. They were intended to haul the Coronation Scot, so the locomotives and special train sets bore a common livery. The locomotives were streamlined and painted Caledonian Railway Blue, with silver horizontal lines along each side of the locomotive. The special train sets that they hauled were also painted in the same shade of blue and had the same silver lining applied along each side of their coaches. In 1938, the second five locomotives, numbers 6225 to 6229, named after duchesses, were also built in streamlined form at an average cost of £11,323 each. They were painted in the same shade of Crimson Lake, which had already been applied to the Princess Royal class. The same style horizontal lining that had been a feature of the first five locomotives was continued, but in gilt this time. Although the Crimson Lake matched the standard LMS rolling stock, there was no real attempt to apply the gilt lining along the sides of these coaches. A prototype train set was built with such lining for an exhibition in America, but was never put into service due to the outbreak of the Second World War. Stania felt that the added weight and difficulty in maintenance due to the streamlining was too high a price to pay for the actual benefits gained at high speed. Therefore, in 1938, a third batch of five locomotives, again named after duchesses, were built. These were number 6230 to 6234, without streamlining at an average cost of £10,659 each. During 1939 and 1940, a fourth batch of ten locomotives, numbers 6235 to 6244, were built in streamlined form, commencing with number 6235, City of Birmingham. The names of cities for locomotives would seem to have been adopted because the LMS was fast running out of names of duchesses. These locomotives cost an average of £10,659 for the first batch, and 10,832 for the final five. The names of cities in this batch were strictly in alphabetical order. This came to an end, however, when number 6244, City of Leeds, was patriotically renamed King George VI in 1941. The fifth batch, again named after cities, comprised of four locomotives, 6245 to 6248. These locomotives were built during 1943 at an average cost 
of £10,908 due to the incorporation of recycled boilers. During the Second World War, the Materials Committee of the Government tried to balance the needs for steel between civilian departments and the War Department when allocating these resources. Despite these constraints, the entire batch was still outshot in streamlined form. And Stania didn't have to lie about them being express passenger locomotives, unlike someone else mentioning no names. Oliver <coughs> bullied! Anyway, the theme of cities continued into 1944 when another batch of four, numbers 6249 to 6252, were built without streamlining. The cost of these locomotives averaged around £11,664 each. A follow-up batch of three locomotives, numbers 6253 to 6255, were built in 1946, and this batch attracted an eye-watering average cost of £15,460 each. The problem of hanging smoke was also addressed, and smoke deflectors were now incorporated into the design. The final two locomotives constructed were to be a modified design of George Ivert, who succeeded both Stania following his retirement, and his immediate successor, Charles Fairburn, who unexpectedly died in office. The first, number 6256, built in 1947, was the last of the class to be built before the nationalisation, and it was therefore honoured by being named after its original designer, Sir William A. Stanier, FRS. The unveiling of the main plate was performed by Stanier himself in 1948, the privately owned railways were nationalised and incorporated into British Railways. It was within this new regime that number 46257 was completed. In common with other LMS locomotives, 40,000 had been added to the original numbers. The spiralling costs after the Second World War combined with design changes resulted in the individual cost of these locomotives escalating to £21,411. You get a decent car for that these days. God. Single chimneys were fitted to numbers 6220 through to 6234 when built. Following a successful trial using number 6234 Duchess of Abercorn on the 26th of February 1939, these were replaced with double blast pipes and chimneys between 1939 and 1940, the last being number 6220 Coronation. From number 6235 onwards, all the locomotives were built with double blast pipes and chimneys. Following a report by George Ivert in 1945, smoke deflectors were introduced due to drifting smoke obscuring the crew's forward vision. The first locomotive to be fitted with smoke deflectors from the outset was number 6253, City of St Albans, in September 1946. The first unstreamlined locomotive to be retrofitted was number 6232, Duchess of Montrose, in February 1945. George Ivert's 1945 report also recommended the removal of all streamlining casings, and they were removed from the fitted locomotives from 1946 onwards. It had been found to be of little value at speeds below 19 miles per hour and was unpopular with running shed employees as it caused difficulty of access for maintenance. The first steps towards de-streamlining was carried out during the Second World War, when many of the streamlined tenders had their side sheets cut away from the rear of the tenders. The removal of the streamlining properly started in April 1946 with number 6235, City of Birmingham. All de-streamlining coincided with the fitting of small deflectors. Number 6243, City of Lancaster, was renumbered 46243 in April 1948, and it was not de-streamlined until 
May 1949. It became the only locomotive to carry its British Railways numbers whilst streamlined. Initially, the locomotives that had previously been streamlined could be readily recognised by the sloping top front of their smoke boxes, as well as slightly smaller front-facing cab windows. In due course, all were re-equipped with cylindrical smoke boxes and larger cab windows, often but not necessarily at the same time. The first locomotive to receive a cylindrical smoke box was number 6226, Duchess of Norfolk in 1952. The last one to retain its sloping top was number 46246, City of Manchester, which appeared with its new smoke box in May 1960. Initially, all locomotives were allocated to Canton Shed in London. By 1939, there were 19 officially stationed there. This ended abruptly when war was declared in September of that year as the government had decreed that in such an event, all Britain's largest locomotives would be mothballed for the duration. Consequently, seven of the class were immediately dispatched to either Holyhead or to Rugby via Manchester Longsight. Within weeks, the stupidity of this policy was realised and the locomotives were recalled and returned to service. In 1940, some of the class were reallocated to Crew North and Glasgow Hormody. As the numbers grew, Crew North was generally the beneficiary, but in 1946, Carlisle Upperby received an initial allocation of six locomotives. At various times, locomotives were also seconded to Liverpool Edge Hill, a typical allocation of the class during the 50s was Camden, 15, Crewnorth, 10, Palmody, 9, and Upperby, 4. During the 1960s, the installation of overhead electrification commenced between London Euston to both Liverpool Lime Street and Manchester Piccadilly. Phase 1 comprised electrification between Crew, Liverpool, and Manchester. Phase 2 involved the extension southwards from Crewe to London. The massive proportions of the Coronation class resulted in their prohibition from running under those wires. Camden's allocation was now run down and the remaining locomotives being transferred to nearby Wilsdon, with Palmody dispensing of the class in its entirety. The bulk of the class was situated at either Crewe North or Carlisle, with the Kingmore Shed now being used in addition to Upperby. Between 1937 and 1939, two significant records were set by locomotives of the Coronation class. Before the introduction of the Coronation Scott, number 6220 Coronation headed a special train of invited guests from London Euston to Crewe on the 29th of June 1937. After a fast but uneventful run, the engine was accelerated up to high speed. Just south of Crewe, the train disputably achieved a speed of 114 miles per hour, narrowly beating the previous British record for a steam locomotive held by the LNER. The brakes were applied far too late for such a speed, and as a result, the train entered a series of crossover points at Crewe much too fast. Fortunately, Stania had designed an inherently stable locomotive, and both Coronation and its following train held the rails, although most of the crockery in the dining car was smashed, much to the dismay of the assembled guests. In contrast to the LNER's record-breaking efforts the previous year, when A4 class number 2512 suffered severe damage when the centre cylinder's big end bearing failed, number 6220 was undamaged and was driven back to London the same day, at an average speed of 79.9 miles per hour, maintaining over 100 for several miles. 
the LNER was to regain its crown on the 3rd of July 1938, when A4 class number 4468 regains the British and world records with a maximum recorded speed of 126 miles per hour. And if you want to know more about that, please feel free to check out my episode on the Gresley A4s. Following an earlier test using number 6234, Duchess of Abercorn, which indicated that the locomotive's power was compromised by its single blast pipe, a double blast pipe and chimney were installed on the 26th of February 1939, when a retest was undertaken, and number 6234 pulled a train of 20 coaches, including a dynamometer car, from Crewe to Glasgow and back. Even though the load was 620 tonnes, the train undertook climbs to the summits at Shap and Betok at unprecedented speeds. Drawbar horsepower, representing the power conveyed directly to the 20 coach train, was frequently recorded at over 2,000 horsepower, and a maximum of 2,511 horsepower was recorded. This remains the official British record for a steam locomotive to this day. Because there were unmeasured variables, the horse bar at the cylinders could only be estimated, with Cecil J. Allen believing it to be 3,333 horsepower, whilst OS Nock was slightly more conservative at 3,209. This sustained power output could not be expected on day-to-day -day services, as it was beyond the shoveling capacity of a single fireman, and two firemen were carried for the test run. Some 17 years later, number 46225, Duchess of Gloucester, a virtually identical sister engine, was tested by British Railways on the open road on the Cecil and Carlisle line. Again, it was established that a continuous drawbar horsepower of 2000 was readily sustainable. Strangely, the drawbar horsepower output on a stationary test plant at Rugby could only be coaxed up to an absolute maximum of 1710 horsepower, which in retrospect casts doubts on the validity of this method. We will now take a look at the accidents and incidents involving members of the class. On the 21st of July 1945, locomotive number 6231, Duchess of Athol, was hauling an express passenger train which overran signals and collided with a freight train that was being shunted in Ecclefecken, Dumfriesshire. Two people were killed and three were injured. Exactly two years later, locomotive number 6244, King George VI, was derailed at 60 miles per hour near Polesworth, Warwickshire, due to the poor state of the track following the years of neglect throughout the Second World War. Coaches piled up behind it, with five passengers being killed and 64 injured. On the 19th of November, 1951, Number 46252, City of Leicester, whilst traversing from the fast line to the slow, was derailed at almost the exact same spot. This time there were no pileups and no serious injuries. On the 17th of April 1948, locomotive number 6251, City of Nottingham, was hauling a mail train which was involved in a rear-end collision with a passenger train at Winsford in Cheshire. In the first major accident of the newly formed British Railways, 24 people were killed and 30 were injured. On the 25th of April 1949, locomotive number 46230, Duchess of Buckluick, was hauling a passenger train which overran a signal and was derailed at Douglas Park Signal Box, Motherwell, Lanarkshire. The signalman was suspected of having deliberately moved the points under the train. On the 8th of October 1952, locomotive number 46242, City of Glasgow, was hauling an express passenger train 
when it overran signals and crashed into a local passenger train at Harrow in Wealdstone, Middlesex. Another express passenger train ran into the wreckage in the second deadliest railway accident in the United Kingdom. 112 people were killed at the scene, and 10 more died later from their injuries. No fewer than 340 people were injured. On the 3rd of February 1954, locomotive number 46250, City of Lichfield, was hauling a passenger train that was derailed inside Watford Tunnel, Hertfordshire, due to a broken rail. The rear three carriages became divided from the train at Watford Junction Station, with one of them ending up on the platform. Fifteen people were injured. There were three instances of firebox crown collapse, resulting in boiler explosions. Number 6224 Princess Alexandra suffered a severe failure at Craigenhill on the 10th of September 1940 due to the inexperience of the crew who both perished. The same locomotive suffered a similar failure on the 7th of March 1948 at Lamington due to dirty and malfunctioning water gauge glasses. The third incident occurred as number 46238, City of Carlisle, was passing Bletchley on the 24th of January 1962. This was attributed to faulty design of the water gauge glasses. The London Midland region, compared with some of the other regions, was slow to discard its big engines. By a matter of a few days, the western region had managed to withdraw the whole of its King class before the first Coronation class was withdrawn. The beginning of the end occurred late in December 1962, when it was deemed uneconomic to proceed with major repairs required by free locomotives. Numbers 46227, 46231, and 46232, and were withdrawn. Numbers 46234, 46246, and 46253 followed the next month, and throughout 1963 the entire initial batch, numbered now 46220 to 46224, were withdrawn alongside number 46230, 46242, 46247, 46249, and 46252. These withdrawals meant by the new year of 1964, there were only 22 of the class remaining. Numbers 46229, 46233, and 46236 followed in 1964, although two of this group were destined for preservation. Attempts were now being made to find a role for the remaining 19 locomotives, as by now many had been relegated to hauling trains in what were once seen as remote outposts by the LMS. Often, they were reduced to pulling stopping trains, empty stop movements, or even goods. Only one realistic mainline role was contemplated, that being to replace the Scottish region A4s, on the testing route between Edinburgh Waverley and Aberdeen. This idea was discarded largely because it would be excessively problematic to train A4 crews to operate the coronations. With no credible role, only one option remained. In July 1964, it was resolved that the remaining 19 locomotives were to be withdrawn from the 12th of September that year. We'll now look at the preserved members of the class and their history. Following its withdrawal in February 1964, number 46229, Duchess of Hamilton, was purchased by holiday camp giant Butlins and put on display at their Minehead site. 
in 1975, following a slow deterioration due to Minehead's salty atmosphere and the looming maintenance costs, Butlins signed a 20-year loan agreement for it to be taken under the wing of the National Railway Museum. In 1976, following a cosmetic overhaul, number 46229 was put on static display in the museum's York premises. In due course, a fundraising appeal allowed an overhaul to take place as a precursor to letting the locomotive operate on the National Rail Network once more. In 1980, the locomotive again took to the rails and thereafter was employed in hauling many enthusiasts' trains. After a substantial overhaul, the Duchess was declared fit to run in 1990 in order to continue its work on the national network, and at the same time the museum had purchased it outright from Butlins. In 1998, however, the locomotive was returned to static display at the National Railway Museum in York. Following a successful appeal run by Steam Railway Magazine, it was decided to re-streamline number 46229. The locomotive was moved to Tisley Locomotive Works for the work to be carried out. The project was completed in 2009, and the locomotive returned to York in May, now wearing its crimson streamlining and pre-war number 6229. Number 46233 was withdrawn at the same time as number 46229 and was also purchased by Butlins and displayed in its holiday camp in air. Although, like number 6229, in my head, it was stripped of its smoke deflectors and painted into a pseudo MS livery. By 1971, it had similarly deteriorated due to the salty seaside air and needed expensive maintenance. It was rescued by Alan Bloom, owner of Norfolk-based Blooms of Bressingham. He had already taken over the Royal Scott locomotive number 6100 from Butlin's Skegness camp. In March 1971, Number 46233 was taken by rail and road to Bressingham on permanent loan. Over the course of the next few years, Bloom spent some £16,000 restoring the locomotive alongside some 20,000 man hours, and in May 1974 it was restored to steam once more. Unfortunately, as 1976 progressed, it was discovered that 46233 would require a new firebox tube plate at a projected cost of £12,000. Bloom was not prepared to spend further money at this time and the engine became a static exhibit at Bressingham. In 1989, Bloom bought the locomotive outright and during 1993, it was moved temporarily to the East Lancashire Railway at Bury, near Manchester, and whilst there, an exercise was undertaken to establish what repairs were necessary and how much it would cost. It was found that the extensive list amounted to around £162,000, and no business plan could be found that would support such expenditure. In November 1995, the Princess Royal Class Locomotive Trust purchased the locomotive for £200,000 for a third party, and the following February it was transferred to the Trust's premises at the Midland Railway in Butterley, Derbyshire. In 1998, funded by public donation and the Heritage Lottery Fund, the third party purchaser was paid off, and the money was now available to restore the locomotive. The works were carried out at the railway's workshop at Swanwick Junction, and in July 2001, the restored locomotive was allowed a trial run on the national network, where it 
promptly broke down and had to be towed home. With the faults fixed, number 46233 now started to generate income by hauling enthusiasts' trains, as well as the royal train on two separate occasions. Following another overhaul commencing in 2010, the locomotive resumed its steaming duties in 2012, this time wearing BR-lined green with an early BR crest. This livery was chosen following a vote run by the Princess Royal Class Locomotive Trust for what the engine should wear after its overhaul. It had originally been intended that 46233 would wear BR green for a year after returning to steam in 2012, before returning to its LMS Crimson Lake livery a year later. It would however stay in its BR livery for an additional five years until the end of 2017. In early 2017, it had its early BR emblem replaced with a later crest, and on its cab side it had the yellow stripe applied. In BR days, this was applied to locos which couldn't run under the overhead wires south of crew. During repairs which were undertaken at Butterley, in 2018 the engine was repainted into LMS Crimson Lake and regained its four-digit LMS number. To this date, 6233 is still owned by the Princess Royal Class Locomotive Trust and is still pulling enthusiast specials. The final member of the class to survive was number 46235. The locomotive's official naming ceremony took place in March 1945, when it was well over five years old. Oldman Wigan Davies performed the service at the back end of Birmingham New Street Station, as the locomotive was too large to be accommodated within the main part of the station. The city's love for its eponymous locomotive was borne out when, in 1953, Birmingham's Museum of Science and Industry determined that they would acquire the locomotive when the opportunity arose. The museum eventually made its purchase in October 1964, when the locomotive was withdrawn. After successive spells at Crew Works, Nuneaton, Crew Again for Cosmetic Work, Saltley Depot and Birmingham Lawley Street Container Terminal, the locomotive was finally moved to the museum in May 1966. At the time, the building was still under construction and was finally completed in 1972. In 1997, Birmingham City Council decided to close the museum and construct the brand new Think Tank Museum, since rebranded Think Tank Birmingham Science Museum in nearby Digbeth. In 2001, the locomotive was moved to the think tank where it remains. It differs significantly from the other two preserved locomotives, as it represents the only untouched example of a British Railways Coronation Class locomotive. I'd like to thank you all for watching and listening. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like the video feel free to share and if you really enjoyed it and you want to see where the series goes next and what we'll cover next, feel free to subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.